working, obviously, now, you know, what's interesting is your team, you know, is sort of been working on StarCraft, obviously, for many years yep. and now uh, moving into Heroes of the Storm. So how do you split your time b between StarCraft and Heroes of the Storm right now? Uh, the, the way I, I split my personal time is I get really amazing people that have been doing a really good job of overlooking both of those things. I mean, the, the teams themselves are made up of outstanding folks. Um, we are a shared team, so it's pretty unique uh, at Blizzard so far. We, ha we are working on StarCraft II, Legacy of the Void actively right now while we're working on Heroes of the Storm. Um, and, and I just try and look in where I can help, but the reality of it is there are great people on both of those teams that are really running the show, making things happen, and maybe... Um, I don't so know. Maybe I'm excited? making myself I mean, useless. No, but what, what gets you excited right now? I mean, where do you find you're putting your personal focus uh, yeah, on? Yeah, I, well, I've been spending a lot of time on, on Heroes more so than StarCraft 2 right now because of where it is in development. Wow. We're going into this very new place for Blizzard uh, with free-to-play. We don't have a lot of technology has to come together to do that right. Yeah. What are the right answers? We're talking about it. We want to bring Blizzard's spin to that and do the right things. Um, to make sure that Heroes is successful, but also right by Blizzard's value system. And so um, I'm spending a lot of time on those sorts of challenges right now. Awesome. So, speaking of the new technology, we recently saw the uh, the Battle.net store have a new uh, skin or a new yeah. look, an update. Uh -huh. Is any of that paving the way for some of this free-to-play technology? There is, yeah. Actually, the Battle.net team themselves are really the, the they, they put the core technology together that we'll end up syncing up with and then using um, in Heroes of the Storm, and so the Blizzard store that's just come online, this new revamp, is is the beginnings of that technology getting out there, and then we're tying the technologies that are on the platform that both StarCraft II and Heroes of the Storm are built on, right. and yeah. and getting those it's things synced like so that we can ultimately right uh, have a successful launch with Heroes of the Storm. Good, that, that's, that's exactly what that looks like. I'll tell you right after. <laughs> now, tell us about some of the debates on the team for Heroes of the Storm when you guys are picking about uh, picking which heroes to kind of put in the game uh, because that must be given your legacy of blizzard having worked on so many games so while, uh, while he's doing some fun conversations test, go yeah that's actually uh, um, it. it's easier to that's actually a really fun part of it i think for us because the pantheon and the history the of, of blizzard Warpath, games Warlords, is, is actually Our really area, um super and strong I found some guild mates and here. we we have so many things we can pick from but now it's about passion projects um so we get to pick those heroes that i think sing and, and connect with the uh, the designers, the artists. So it's it's really a combination of pulling from inspiration that make the design the designers really want to make a, a hero in their sort of creation and their in their idealistic world and then the artists get to draw the hero that they want and say designers make this cool. Yeah. Um, and then we're finding that we're even bringing some others to the table. I think you ain't seen nothing yet might be appropriate here because we, we've only touched on the big Worlds, you know, Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo. But we've got some other Blizzard classics that are out there as I well. Heard Lost Vikings. I think Dust was saying there's a chance that you guys might have it's, those. Yeah, it's very it. possible. You know, and I and, love that and, idea. And, and, I love that I'm idea. I'm beginning to love. I, and me too. Me too. I'm, and the other thing too is uh, the, there's character and a lot of things coming together in these new battlegrounds that we put into the game. So um, I'm starting to get fond of Captain Blackheart, who's on. One of one of the four battlegrounds that we have here this weekend, and who knows? You know, we, we it's it's really inspiring. I think in a breath of fresh air for our artists who have been working so, and, and designers and the team in general have been working on, in within a specific world and a specific genre for a long time. That this frees them up to do crazy stuff, and I love it. The nexus is this concept yeah. that really is a giant excuse for us to be able to do lots and lots of different things. So, very excited about that. Very cool. One of the things that you're showing on the floor is this new battleground concept, which is going to require some type of objectives on yes. the field as well. Mm -hmm. Are people picking it up very fast? How are you seeing the testing going? Are yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I, I think with battlegrounds, what we're showing is the kind of end game. Right. Um, it's a lot to take in. If you are first coming to this, there's some basic mechanics that are there. Both sides are fighting to destroy the enemy towns and fortifications and, and basically destroy the other opponent's base. So there's that basic concept that you can do. But when you start to throw in collecting doubloons and turning them into Captain Blackheart and collecting skulls to you know get your grave golem big, 
uh, and fight the enemy. That stuff gets a little more complicated, but you would never go into the game this way. The game would unlock across time. But I think in seeing just four of the battlegrounds, and we intend to have a lot more, you can see the amount of strategic change and variety, which is exactly what we're after with Heroes of the Storm. Uh, this morning when we were coming in, we were watching people run, and then they were running in to go into the main hall, and they were running to get in line to play Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> it has been crazy. I, I've, I, I've been so pleasantly surprised. Just the rollout in the opening ceremony was, you know, yeah. I, I felt yes. like we Amazing we're, video, though. I, 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 was, I felt like we're on to something really good here. Um, but the reaction, it, it blew out my expectations. And it was, it was more than just here's the storm. It was really like Mike said, it feels like we've come home, which yeah. it yeah. is in that year off. Yeah. Had a big impact. So it was like kind of a... I don't know. It felt it felt really cool being a blizzard, but the reaction to Heroes of the Storm was was really awesome. It was really really good. Someone said this weekend, I don't remember who, but they called Heroes of Storm uh, Heroes of the Storm Blizzard the game. Yeah, um, you know what? I think that accurately describes it. It you know, Dustin talked about it. I think in our panel we did a little bit about how it came together, and it was first just a map in StarCraft II with StarCraft Heroes largely. A couple of e ETC was maybe even there then, and then it transitioned to this. We, we looked at this image on the side of one of our arcade machines, and Sammy is the guy. I mean, he really does this stuff like, that's the game. And you're like, what do you mean this? Yeah, that's the game. And it's this image, and it's just all the Blizzard yeah. Yeah. worlds thrown together, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it ratcheted up a level in 2011, and now I think we've really landed on the, what it needs to be. The fans are definitely digging a massive line for this yeah, game. Well, Chris, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. Congrats on Thank uh, you so much. I appreciate it.